for you. Oh, that, oh, I just lost it. Oh. Awkward breathing in the mouth, okay? Then you want to click. And if you stand in here, we can see yourself in that, in this, uh, or here, here, oh, don't, serious? just be careful. Just be careful, but you can see, <laughs> yeah, so you can see everybody in there, okay? All right, so don't go past where you are, all right? You're gonna kill the joke, you got it. Open it up, go for it. Who cares about it? <laughs> So, I know all that has seen the sad commercial of the dogs that like being abused yeah. <laughs> and caged up and like, yeah. and, uh, <coughs> and they're hungry and cold and abused and we are touched by their living conditions they are in. And some of these animals are personally chained up and outside in bad weather. So we're going to host the um, dog show to raise awareness for uh, shelters who are in need of food, money, and food items. We believe that homeless dogs need to obtain shelters and homes because the animals will not survive without them. Because dog needs home just like humans need homes. We, they need food just like we need food. food. They are just like humans. The only thing about it, the murky and he has fur. <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel if you had no food, no home to go to, and no one to take care of you? Well, that's how the dogs feel. And, and you can't see humans with no, you can't see dogs. <laughs> And some, yeah. Oh, next slide. Oh. Well, we plan to have an entry fee, fifteen dollars per dog. That's how we're going to raise the money for the um for the money for the shelters that I need. We're having prizes for the best dressed dog, so y'all can bring your dogs in little costumes and the cute. Got me one something. Have a photo booth for the dogs. Have the dogs dressed up and take funny slash cute pictures. And we'll have little dog activities, like cool dog activities. Like costumes and pictures. I don't have a dog, so I wear a dog. But I love them, though. <laughs> and we know this person that make dog, great dog treats is peanut butter in there. I know that for sure. And we love them. And we believe we can raise money for shelters that are need. So we have contacted Ms. Hood, and she's from the animal shelter of the ASPCA, and she gave us the contact, Mr. Kenyatta Johnson, and he's actually a councilman <coughs> in the city of Philadelphia. And if you go to the next slide, um, these are flyers of 
like dog shows that he has hosted. They were really successful. So we hope that we could partner up with him and make our show successful too. And this is, I think this is 2013. The other one was 2014. I don't, we haven't seen the fly, flyer for 2015 nor 2016, so I know he has one. I hope he become the one for 2016. 2017. Oh, oh my God, for real? <laughs> 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 oh, 2017, oh my God. Between April or May, that's when we're gonna host it, and then 25th, it's gonna be at the 25th of the street. A little dog on the side. This is Jennifer's dog named T. So I had my dog for like about seven years, and everybody knows that she's everything. So yeah, like she's everything. She's the cutest. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's a shit too. So I've had her for a while. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to keep it going with green flow, and um, if you have more stuff to write, um, you will have time to be able to go around to the conversation stations and do that as well and, and ask some more questions. So we'll start off with Ms. Shadira Russell. Hi, I'm Shadira. This is Chase, Toe, and Zay, and our group name is Green Flow. So sustainability, what is sustainability? So summing up sustainability just means that we don't want to harm the environment in any way and okay. basically we don't want to have any long-term ecological effects on the environment and there are a lot of things that aren't sustainable, right? So things like plastic, paper, which a lot of people think they can be recycled, um, right? So when we recycle things, we're just, right, we're just, we're reusing them, but we want to reduce first, and things like plastic and paper, they aren't going to ever break down, so they'll always be here. Those affect a lot of the other processes in our day-to-day -day lives, affecting our health, our children, everything that's really, really important to us, and it's based on all the processes that we entertain every single day. So this is a really important thing, um, and Toe's going to talk a little bit about that. Our group's idea is to create, to provide a healthy, sustainable, grown food in, in hope. Uh, zero waste packaging 
uh, in this process, we will provide great jobs for teens um, uh, in agriculture. Uh, in the first part, in the first phrase, we are to fund our idea. We decided to create a cookbook, uh, and we this uh, filled with recipes uh, uh, in different na neighborhoods throughout the city. Oh, and we uh, are teaming up with Philadelphia Food Processes, uh, food science, um, to create healthier versions of the recipes that the local restaurants give. Well, our process is easy. As told me, as you heard Toe say, we're going to process we're going to make a cookbook so like we're going to go to like different neighborhoods in philadelphia you know like west philly like north roxboro uh up the derby you know the counties just to get like uh recipes from like local chefs and then second in order for us to make this happen we have to network and get to know different people that sell sustainable products for us and like different produce growers like different farms and everything and to our the big the big idea of the project is to provide sustainable food baskets filled with produce. And we were, we were looking at like inner city families, uh, you know, that are not able to receive these products. So we wanted to make them affordable and also like biodegradable materials. And biodegradable means like, uh, like it breaks, like it breaks down easily, I, I would say. And that it helps us from reducing waste. So one really important quote that's really important, important to us would be um, by Howard Zinn. He's a social rights and social justice activist. Um, and he says, we don't have to engage in grand heroic actions to participate in the process of changing. Small acts when multiplied by millions of people can transform the world, which really roots back to the idea which Joe announced earlier, creating sustainable food cycles. So by providing these sustainable baskets, for getting the word out and reducing waste in these processes by using biodegradable materials that can break down easily and use this compost. We're constantly regrowing and resustaining the same food. And the really important thing about this project is that it can be, it's, it's very expandable. All people eat food. And in North America, we have sort of the luxury of being able to grow food in different ways, which is also another really interesting thing. Um, so basically, what's really important is that we would like to use um, other farms and other sources of growers, right? So not just traditional farms, urban farms, hydroponic farms. So there's a constant network of food that we can always use and we can always provide to people. So yeah, that's, that's what our project is. And basically the idea is, like I was saying earlier, it's sustainable. Anywhere there's food, people will be able to grow sustainably. Thank you. Thank you. 
Like the reason behind Boser Betty and pretty much is that we had like a personal connection and so Damani's grandmother had um, oral cavity can mouth cancer and my grandmother was back in seventh grade my grandmother was diagnosed with breast cancer and you know she had to go through like the whole process you know radiation chemo and then she became cancer free at one point and then a few months later we went back to the hospital and they said the cancer has came back but it was more aggressive this time, and the whole right side of her body was actually swollen at one point. And you know, so with that, it means more radiation, more chemo, um, appointments, and everything. And then it went on, when we went back to the hospital one day, they said that they couldn't do anything else for her. So pretty much it's like, there's nothing they can do to like help the cancer anymore. It's pretty much just like taking over. And the cancer started to like spread within her body, like through like her whole entire body, so like her lungs ending up to her brain, which is what's called the swelling at one point. And that, so, um, so we decided to come up with the, um, so like remember my grandmother and her grandmother and anyone who else who has cancer, we want to remember them in a different way and like make it like stylish too. So we can go to that. Um, I would just like to have like a raising hand here. Who in here knows someone who has cancer or had cancer at one point? See, it's pretty much the whole room. Everyone knows someone who has cancer or has had cancer at one point. And in 2012, um, 8.2 million people died from cancer, and that was the leading cause of death. Okay, so our idea is to hand make bowls, and like it's open for anybody like of all ages and genders. So it's for anybody that wants to support cancer or financially support. And the money that we get from the bulls, we're gonna half of it we're gonna give to Fox Shade Center Cancer Center and then the other half we're gonna use for materials to make more bulls so we can make more money to get back to the Fox Shade. So our plan of action is to first learn how to create bulls, which we already did, like at our conversation section and we would like we'll show you how to make bulls. And we'll buy the fabric. We're really trying to figure out how we're going to raise money to start up right now. And then the bowls can are being made in our shop business. And like when we have free time at home, we'll go home and make more bowls. And they will be sold in our Mercy School store to our faculty and students. And to local charities, family members, uh, the Fox Cage Chancer gift shop, they said we could possibly sell our bowls in here. And then the Love, love Obsessed Boutique. So our prices, um, the price for the big bowl is going to be five dollars. The price for our keychain bowl is going to be three dollars, and our price for our mini bowl is going to be two dollars. So for us to create the bowls, we need fabric, like zip ties, a lot of things. So for a big bowl, it only costs twenty-three cents to make one, and we'll donate three dollars from that back to Fox Chase Cancer Center. And for the small bowls, it only costs fifteen cents, and we'll put a dollar back to Fox Chase Cancer Center. So what we want to do is give all the money back to Fox Chase Cancer Center because that's where Gabby's grandmother went. So we want to like honor her memory and that's why we're doing that. And we also want to like visit different cancer centers to see what people go through and like get to know their stories a little bit. And we we also have another idea where like if you buy a bow but you don't want to wear it, you call us and donate, donate it back to us and we'll give it to like people who are struggling with cancer right now. Thank you. That's it.
and my group is gone by Did you pictures? I'm sorry, getting my duties. Sorry. Okay. Now, before I get into the story, how many people know someone who was injured or possibly killed by gun violence? Okay. How many people wake up every morning and turn on the news and you see someone shot and killed and went to the hospital? Okay, so basically these questions is like reflecting, relating to my life that I reflected earlier because six years ago I had a close friend who died due to gun violence. And honestly, personally, it took me a while to get over it mentally because me and him, we did everything together. He was basically my best friend. Even though it was six years ago, till this day, I, till this day, I wish he was here with me. My passion about why I'm doing this is because uh, I want to make Philadelphia more safer. So the kids that's like going to like schools, like high middle schools, high schools, colleges, they don't have to worry about someone they get close about dying because if you lose someone like important to you, like your dad, your mom, they could probably like go back to you, like uh, they could go back to you, like how your like your education is, so that you got trouble learning. Here are some of the effects. Firearms were, firearms was used in 19,392 suicides in the U.S. in 2010, and almost 62% of suicide. Almost 62% of all gun deaths, 3% of Americans own half of the country, 265 million guns, between 300,000 and 600,000 guns are stolen each year. 111,779 Americans that have been shot and killed in the past year. Basically, my goal is I plan on going to local middle schools, such as my old school, which is like this, and Salina, and I want to teach them about the best that gun violence can have on somebody like mentally and physically. And I, after I go to a local middle school, I plan to go to a recreation center for the neighborhood. So if they want to come down and support or know someone that want to know more about it, like has to make an impact, they can come here and they can learn more about it. Uh, how can I achieve this? Because uh, I plan on contacting Anti-Violence Partnership of Philadelphia, and I was looking at their website, and they have this, they have a counseling service where whoever lost somebody that's important to them, they can go in and they can talk to them about, like basically make them feel better. So I want to partner with them so they can come to the recreation center with my event, so they can like tell their personal story, so people can actually like, so people can actually have like a more so they can like have a reason why they should. I can't say, it, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all for coming. I hope you all enjoyed it all. <clears throat> I hope you all enjoyed the presentations. to write down some more feedback and if you'd like to help yourself to more coffee and juice and bagels donuts in the back please do so and then and then um, we'll have time for you guys to visit the conversation stations where you'll meet a few other groups who um, weren't presenting today but um, have some great stories to tell you about people that they reached out to um, and just I'd like to add the the bulk of people that um, have worked with our students, our students have reached out to. They wrote the emails, they made the phone calls, and they did the research to find the people that they needed to connect to. And I was just so impressed. In fact, I have to talk about your group. I had um, one student come up and say, well, Mr. Rusty, we have somebody here from the USO who came to the school. And she's like, well, they told us we had a, 
we had uh, questions for a project. So we came. I'm like, well, thank you for coming and just showing up. And um, they, as if you visit um, the table over there in the, the pink trifold with Brianna and Kat, uh, they will tell you about their experience and their story and how it changed the direction of what they thought they were going to do by the story that they heard and the insight that they were given. So um, we'll give you some time and thank you so much. And also, I'm oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, Zach White is um, also, if you raise your hand, Zach, in the back, he is um, also co-presenting with Green Flow, but he also has another passion project of his own that he's going to be showing us. So he's very excited to share that as well. So he's doing double time. He's doing two projects for you guys today. So. And I will now really let you guys <laughs> be able to go. Two people that um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. You see me? Oh, it's on a delay. I'm hugging you on the screen. We that is all for our presentations this morning, and thank you for joining us. And um, hopefully, you can tune in again later. Okay. I, I didn't sign. Didn't sign any releases. <laughs> <laughs> Did now. We are on schedule. We are on point.